price by John, have mercy on us. We magnify you, O Lord, the King, Holy God and Son, Word of the Father, Lord Jesus Christ, in much in nature, who was born of Virgin Mary, who are not in salvation of mankind. Without change of nature, you became the Son of Man, and was crucified for us, thus shall we at our foot, and destroy him forever. You are the one and only Trinity, and we worship and glorify, equally with your Father, and your Lady and Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us. Holy Allah. the riches of your divine wisdom and the gift of your Holy Spirit enable us to gladly obey your commands and to perfectly fulfill your holy will. Amen. From the first letter of John, praise be to your Lord and apostles, for the greatest grace is in your word. Beloved, I am writing you to no new commandment, but an old commandment that you have had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new commandment that is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is ready is shining. Whoever says, I am in the light, while hating a brother or sister, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves a brother or sister lives in the light, and is in such a person, there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates another believer is in the darkness, walks in the darkness, and doesn't know the way to go, because the darkness has brought on blindness. I'm writing to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven on the account of his name. I'm writing to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I'm writing to you, young people, because you have conquered the evil one. I'm writing to you, children, because you know the Father. I write to you, fathers, because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young people, because you are strong, and the word of the God, God abides in you, and you have overcome the evil one. Do not love the world or things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world, for all the... For all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride and riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desires are passing away, but those who do the will of God live forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Offer sacrifices of praise to the Lord. Come and worship in His holy courts. Amen. 
brethren, let's stand in silence all in reverence, and listen to the proclamation of the living word of God from the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace be with you all. May the Lord make us all worthy of his word. word. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which proclaims life and salvation to the world, as recorded by Apostle St. John. Blessed is he who has come and will come again. Praise the Father, Son, and for our salvation. May his blessings be upon us. In the days of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Word of Life, God incarnate, of the Blessed Virgin Mary, it happened in this way. So we believe in After the Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias, and a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes, then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him. For he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five pearly loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? Jesus said, How the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them, them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the leftover fragments, that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw this sign that he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into this world. Peace. Be with you all. Now we so with you. We thank you, Lord, that you give us your gospel, which is the light of the world, to draw us closer to you. Enable us by your grace to praise you to the living words of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord for his blessings and mercy. Lord, who is the source of all blessings, have us and bless us. us. O oh Lord, help us continually to offer praise and thanksgiving to you, to him who assaults us from our death and pardons our sins, to him who receives the penitent and rejoices in the return of sinners, to him who has promised, call, and I will answer, knock, and I will open and stretch forth my hand to pardon your sins and iniquities. To him belong glory and honor and worship at this time and the days of our lives. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord for his blessings and mercy. O oh Lord God, who makes the sinner righteous, pardons our sins and make us holy, blot out all my sins. Through your loving mercy, 
to the Lord, wipe away the sins of all believers. O Lord God, in your mercy and goodness, remember us, our parents, brothers and sisters, our bishops, clergy, teachers of the faith, and all faithful children of your holy and glorious church. Lord God, comfort us in body, mind and spirit. Shower your mercy upon us, be the remission of our sins. Make us all worthy of the good end that is set for all children of peace. To you we offer praise and thanksgiving forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and glorious Lord, save us from the vice of the evil one. O oh Lord, in your grace and mercy, you took flesh of the Blessed Virgin Mary and became human. Lord of Lords, do not banish us from your presence and from the company of the angels who continually praise your holy name and proclaim aloud that the Lord God is holy. Show us the way of life and salvation so that we may pursue to attain your glorious kingdom. Lord Jesus, look upon us with the eye of mercy. Save us from our enemies and all that would hurt us. Protect us in the shadow of your cross. Lord Jesus, save us from all deceit and greed. Save us from all evil thoughts, defilement and blasphemy. Lord Jesus, make us to rejoice with all the children of your kingdom. To you and to the Father and to the Holy Spirit, we ascribe all praise and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. Weak and sinful as we are, let us confess and together say, Holy is the Holy Father.
celebrating their birthdays or wedding anniversaries may I come forward for the prayers. Okay, anybody would like to thank God? have the thanksgiving prayer now. Father, we want to thank you and we want to praise you for this blessed Sunday morning. Thank you, Lord, for another opportunity to experience your presence in our midst as we are in this holy communion. We experience your presence in our lives. We pray for all the people who are attending this service from far and near. At this time, Lord, we pray for these, your children, who have come and kneel down before your throne of grace. Lord, they want to thank you for all the blessings and guidance and the protection they experience in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for being with them, guiding them, and helping them in all their ways. At this time, as they dedicate themselves before you. Lord, accept their praise, accept our, their dedication, and help them to continue to be a blessed witness wherever they are. Lord, at this time, we thank you and praise you for the lives of these, your children. As they are thanking God, please continue to bless them. And in Jesus' precious name, we pray. Have the announcements. There are a few kalpanas from our uh, metropolitan in charge and from our, our diocesan episcopa. I will go through the important parts. Malangara Slahi Asim Hasan Dr. Givurgis Mar Theodosius, Suffragan Metropolitan Linum, circular number two. Number the Arthur Potas Hala Polygil, Vigari Marin, the Esha Potacarim, Polycaicarim, General and Gandana Lingal Pavarb, Pertavil Priere. Covid nineteen, Pragarmula, Nindrangal Paliche, Number of Polygil, Arath Hill, Multivikin, the Samandiche. Finia Joseph, Doctor Joseph Martham, Metropol, the Trimenude, Circular Number Mumuti, Ruthi on the Pragarm, Arachid and Serge, Polygil Lenara, Sharadana, Multivichi Gai in Velo. Lockdown in the Ranka Low on the Rikin the Nal, Nelevula, Covid nineteen protocol, Samandicha Sarkar, Nabanel Kashanama, Palichundum, other the Pradesh, Pradeshika, Megalile, Sarkar, Ayoga, Ubhanga, and the Radeshang Sigirishundu, Amade, Padras and Episcopa, and the Indra Tilula, Indra the Videma, and I theed with the Namber on the Mother Namada Polygli, Yara Sharadan, Punar and Bikavanadum, Anna, 
രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത് ഒക്ടോബർ പതിനേഴ് ഇരുപത്തി ഏഴിന് കൂടിയ എപ്പിസ്കോപ്പൽ സിനഡ് തീരുമാനിച്ച പ്രകാരം അറിയിക്കുന്നു കോവിഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ പ്രകാരമുള്ള സർക്കാർ നിബന്ധനകൾ പാലിക്കുന്നതിന് ഇടവ വികാരി വികാരിയും ഇടവക ചുമതലക്കാരും പ്രത്യേകം ശ്രദ്ധിക്കേണ്ടതാണ് വിശുദ്ധ കുർബാനയിൽ ശുദ്ധീകരിച്ച അപ്പവീഞ്ഞുകൾ ഇപ്പോൾ നൽകുന്ന രീതി തുടരാവുന്നതാണ് എന്നാൽ കോവിഡ് കാലഘട്ടത്തിൽ അപ്പം കയ്യിലും വീഞ്ഞ് ശുചിയാക്കി വീണ്ടും ഉപയോഗിക്കത്തക്ക വിധമുള്ള റീയൂസബിൾ ചെറിയ ഗ്ലാസ് കപ്പുകളിലും ഓരോരുത്തർക്കും നൽകാവുന്നതാണ് അഭിനയ ഡോക്ടർ ജോസഫ് മാർത്തോ മെത്രാ പോലീത തിരുമേനിയുടെ മുന്നൂറ്റി അറുപത്തി ആറാം നമ്പർ സർക്കിൾ പ്രകാരം പട്ടക്കാരുടെയും മറ്റു ജീവനക്കാരുടെയും ശമ്പളത്തിൽ നിശ്ചിത വിഹിതം ലോക്ക്ഡൗൺ കാലഘട്ടത്തിൽ കുറവ് വരുത്തിയിരുന്നുവല്ലോ അതായത് രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത് ഒക്ടോബർ മുപ്പത്തി ഒന്ന് വരെ പ്രാബല്യത്തിലിരിക്കുന്നതും നവംബർ ഒന്ന് മുതൽ ശമ്പളവും മറ്റ് അലവൻസുകളും പൂർണ്ണമായി നൽകേണ്ടതുമാണ് ലോകമ്പാട് കോവിഡ് നയൻറ്റീൻ മൂലം ഉളവായിരിക്കുന്ന പ്രതിസന്ധികൾക്ക് തക്കതായ വാക്സിൻ കണ്ടുപിടിക്കുന്നതിനും എത്രയും വേഗം ആരോഗ്യകരമായ അവസ്ഥ ഉണ്ടാകുന്നതിനും സർവശക്തനായ കർത്താവ് സഹായിക്കട്ടെ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു കർത്താവ് ശിമിഷികാട് കൃപയും സമാധാനം എല്ലാവരോടും കൂടെ ഉണ്ടായിരിക്കുമാറാകട്ടെ എന്ന തിരുവല്ല പൂലാത്തിൽ നിന്നും ക്രിസ്താബ്ദം രണ്ടായിരത്തി ഇരുപത് ഒക്ടോബർ മാസം ഇരുപത്തി ഒൻപതാം തീയതി ഡോക്ടർ ഗീവറീസ് മാർത്തി ഡോഷ്യസ് സഫ്രഗൻ മെത്രാപൊലിത്ത മെത്രാപൊലിത്ത ഇൻ ചാർജ് ഡി സി ത്രീ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് തേർട്ടി സിക്സ് ട്വൻറ്റി ട്വൻറ്റി ഒക്ടോബർ തേർട്ടിയത്ത് ട്വൻറ്റി ട്വൻറ്റി ടു ദ ക്ലർജി മെമ്പേഴ്സ് ഓഫ് ദി ഡയസേഷൻ കൗൺസിൽ ആൻഡ് ഡയസേഷൻ അസംബ്ലി ഇൻ ദി ഡയസേസ് ഓഫ് നോർത്ത് അമേരിക്ക ആൻഡ് യൂറോപ്പ് ഓഫ് ദി മാർത്തമ ചേർച്ച് Dearly beloved in Christ, greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Considering the present situation, the Episcopal Synod has decided that the Diocesan Assembly may be conducted through online platform and election of the, to the Diocesan Council may be conducted in person or through postal ballot. Therefore, the Diocesan, Diocesan Council in its meeting held on October 16, 2020 has resolved to conduct the Diocesan Assembly of the Diocese of North America and Europe of the Mathoma Church at 10 a.m. on Saturday, December 12th, 2020 at the Carmel Mathoma Center and also make it available via, via Zoom for some members who cannot attend in person. The election to the Diocesan Council will also be conducted through the postal ballot as well as in in-person voting on December 12th. 2020 from 11:30 a.m. to 1:30 p.m. Reverend Dr. Philip Borghese and Reverend Sakaria Skaria Borghese will assist the diocesan bishop in conducting in uh, uh, the election. Further information regarding the procedure of the election will be sent by the diocesan secretary. May the Lord strengthen all of us to work together for his kingdom. Yours in his service, Dr. Peter and Dr. Isaac Mar, Philoxenos, diocesan episcopal. number 335 2020 dearly beloved christ uh, we are experiencing an unforeseen situation due to covid-19 the question of conducting the general body meeting of the parishes and congregation is raised and it is appropriate to have some directions in this matter the annual general body meeting of for passing the report accounts and budgets as well as the general body meeting for the election of office bearers and executive committee members may be conducted either through in person general body meeting if possible or through online via zoom or web, webex platform therefore the following instructions are given to the parishes and the congregations for the better conduct of the general body meeting one for the election of office bearers and executive committee members for the next financial year the vicar is authorized to prepare maintain and publish the list of the members of the idavaga sangam general body on the notice board in accordance with the church constitu- constitution if an in person general body meeting is not feasible due to the pandemic it may be conveyed online via zoom uh, platform to transact the agenda as per as per the decision of the executive committee election of office bearers and executive committee members for the next financial year may be conducted during the in person general body meeting wherever possible and if it is not f- feasible election may be conducted by inviting nominations in accordance with the election procedures mentioned in clause number 232 to 251 of the church constitution notice for of election should be announced in the parish congregation on two consecutive sundays after the service and, and the same should be should also be published in the notice board of the parish and also through electronic media containing the information about the last date time and place of submission of nomination purpose scrutiny withdrawal and the time date place of voting 
and counting of votes, etc. The duty, sorry, the duly published Devoga Sangam list for the year 2020 shall be the voters list for the above election. All persons whose names appear in the Devoga Sangam register shall be eligible to contest in elections, uh, proposed and second candidates and vote in the elections. All parishes and congregations should follow the protocols of the respective state, city, or town and arrange for the general body meeting and voting procedures accordingly. May God give you grace to have a peaceful and spirit-filled Christian life. He was in his service, Right Reverend Dr. Isaac Ma Philoxenos, Diocesan Episcop. Next Sunday we are observing as the Sunday. We all know that the uh, mission activities of our diocese, including the uh, Native Mission, Native American Mission in Oklahoma, Utah, and Alabama, and Mexico, and all these missions are uh, funded and get the financial support through the Communication Media Collection. And uh, we will have a collection next Sunday. So please uh, bring your Communication Media Collection by coming Sunday, or you can send uh, the check in favor of uh, NGO uh, with the memo of Communication Media Collection 2020. Today we are observing as the World Sunday School Sunday, and we are very happy to see the Sunday School kids uh, and teachers helping the service, and we want to thank them. Sunday School General Body will be held on November 1st, uh, that is today, at uh, 1.15 p.m. over Zoom. Agenda, election of Sunday School Committee for 2021. Sunday School uh, Virtual Christmas will be held on <coughs> December 19, along with the uh, churches, other organizations, support. MGO Talent Night, organized by Eurodhana Sakyam, will be held on November 21st. Uh, all church members and all the organizations of our church are invited to come with uh, some uh, recorded programs, video programs. Videos uh, have to be submitted before November 19th. You can send your videos to uh, the conveners, Mebin, Matthew, or uh, Sarun. And we will have a chief guest, uh, Father Severios, and he is attending the uh, on that day. This week, uh, two meetings, Sunday school from at the 2 p.m. Sevilla Sangam meeting will be held today at 4 p.m. Midweek uh, Bible study will be held on Wednesday at 4, uh, 7 p.m. You know, mission will be held on Friday and chain prayer as usual Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, Sunday service, next Sunday is observed with the Subhishesha Nidhi Sunday and the Holy Communion will be held in uh, English at uh, 9 a.m. Mission and charity request, uh, we are supporting the diocesan mission, Subhishesha Nidhi. Uh, we'll be collecting this, we'll be separating this month's mission for Utah, Alabama, Oklahoma, and Mexico mission. Because this year uh, it was very hard, especially for the people in uh, uh, the, the native people in Utah and all. And our uh, diocesan mission board were able to uh, go to the uh, Utah and helping them with the food supplies and all. So we uh, would like to support this mission. So please support uh, the mission this month's mission for the diocesan mission. Uh, under charity, we, ha we have received an education aid. Uh, a, a nursing student, Asha Thomas, and her father passed away, and she comes from a very a poor family, and uh, she lives with uh, her mother and uh, her siblings. And after joining the uh, nursing studies, she lost her father, and uh, the family is struggling to pay the finance, uh, the fees for her education. So uh, we would like to help uh, Asha Thomas uh, this month. Uh, please support this uh, student so that she can complete uh, her studies. Thank you for your continued support for mission and charity uh, programs of our church. And I would like to thank our. Uh, uh, office bearers and committee members and all the church members 
for their, your continuous support for the activities of the church. Especially last week, it was hard for all of us. You know, it was a week without power, internet, uh, and uh, everything. Uh, almost all of us were affected. And uh, when you come inside the church, you see the Also, a new uh, gas shell. We used to use the electric shell, uh, but we got a new one. It was already damaged. <coughs> we got a new one, and everything is getting ready. So I would like to thank uh, the office bearers, Prasajan, uh, Pramijan, Jorjan, and Raikan for taking care of that, and all the committee members. And a special thanks to Mr. Saji Matthew, who is here. He arranged the most of the stuff. Thank you, and uh, let us give them a close. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, we would like to thank the AV team and all the people who help us in uh, this service. I won't uh, take much more time. So today, as I said, we are um, celebrating today at the World Sunday School uh, Sunday, and it's a very important day for our church, for any churches. Uh, so today, uh, we have a Sunday school teacher and a Sunday school uh, student uh, uh, talking to us uh, in a little message. So it's going to be Giovanna Sakwea and uh, Gipsy Silas from the teacher's side. So let me ask uh, Giovanna, uh, Giovanna to come forward to deliver the sermon. Let us pray for uh, our Sunday school yes, and the Sunday school kids and uh, may God bless them. And after John and Gipsy uh, will be speaking to us. Hello, everyone. First of all, I wanted to thank God for this beautiful day he's given us. And I also wanted to thank Achin, Sherpa Tirchi, and Sonia Tirchi for giving me this opportunity to speak to all of you this morning. Today we are celebrating World Sunday School Day. We celebrate this day on the first Sunday of November. Over the years, Sunday School has become a big part of my life. I have many fond memories of each of my classes. This year, Sunday School meets every Sunday at 2 p.m. on Zoom. We have a general session led by different classes each week, and then we break out into our separate classes to learn our lessons for the week. I thank God for the virtual media platforms he has given us so that we can still come together, worship, and learn more about him. I also wanna thank all the Sunday School teachers that I've had over the years. For today's meditation, I wanted to focus on 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. This verse states, Little children, you are from God and have conquered them, for the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God, thank you for bringing us all together again, and thank you for everything you've done for us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. When I was looking at different Bible verses, I saw someone had explained this verse in this way. The Lord is greater than the giants we face. We face many giants in our lives, but God equips us with what we need to overcome them. As Sunday school students, these giants may come in the form of conflicts with friends, bullying, or peer pressure, but God is always there, helping us get through these struggles in our lives. Firstly, when facing these giants, we have to look to the Lord for help. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing. When we face difficulty, we always tend to turn to material things for comfort, before we turn to God. 
over time, we will start to look to money or friends for comfort instead of turning to our God. As a Sunday school student, make it a habit to speak to God every single day and spend time in his presence. Whenever I face a problem, it seems easier to turn to my friends or rely on myself, but I have to actively remind myself that I am nothing without God. Secondly, we must trust in God. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 states, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. The dictionary definition of the word trust is firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. We have to be willing to open our hearts and rely on God. In this crazy world, God is the only certainty we have. So don't put your thing, trust in things that are unreliable. Put your trust in God. The best way we can grow our relationship with God is putting our trust in him alone. Especially when we're facing this virus, the future seems uncertain and it's scary to look ahead. The fear feels like it's drowning us, but God should be a lifesaver that we can hold on to. Lastly, to overcome these giants, we must find strength in the Lord. First Chronicles chapter 16, verse 11 states, Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Do not be scared when the future is uncertain because God is right there with you. When the world seems like it's flipped on its side, remember who's on your side, God. It may seem scary to take a hard test, stand up to a bully, or confront a friend. But don't be scared because the Lord your God goes with you and he will help you. Overall, the three things we need to do to overcome our giants are pray, trust, and find strength in the Lord. If we pray and create a relationship with God, we will be able to trust in him and rely on his strength. May our Lord Almighty help us to take these steps and apply them to our lives. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Well, thank you so much, Joanna, for that wonderful message. And I pray that God will just continue to just use you and strengthen you for the glorification of his kingdom. So for today, all of us, before I begin, I would just like to thank Achin, the Sunday School Office Bearers, and above all, I would like to thank my, our Lord Almighty, for giving me the strength and the courage to stand before you today to share a few thoughts from his word. So by now, all of us are aware that today is World Sunday School Day, but we also have this theme alongside World Sunday School Day, and that is sanctification of the church through the learning and nurturing of faith and practices. And despite all the wonderful lessons that we heard today, I thought for today, let's focus on the word sanctification by looking at the verse, John chapter 17, verses 19. John 17, verses 19. Could I have someone read that for me? And for their sake, I sanctify, sanctify myself so that they also may be sanctified in the truth. For them, I sanctify myself so that they too may be truly sanctified. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to just come here and gather here to praise and worship your holy name. I pray and thank you, Lord Jesus, for Joanna and the wonderful message that she shared from you. I pray that you help it to like touch our heart, Lord God. I pray that you help me to speak your word to your people. Thank you again for this opportunity. Everything I ask in your holy, beautiful, precious, and life-giving name, amen. Okay. Sanctification, it's a big word. Not only in the sense that it's composed about, of about 14 letters that make up it, but because of the meaning it holds, to be holy, to be set apart. Now, I don't know about you, but personally speaking for me, I can go off the top of my head 
and quote so many different speakers talking about being set apart, being holy. You're supposed to go to the ends of the earth. You're supposed to preach. You are lighted to lighten. You're the salt of the earth. So many people speak about this, right? And the common theme underlying everything that they say is sanctification, the process of being set apart, the process of being holy, happens through action. But actually, is that where sanctification begins? Does sanctification only happen through our actions? Is that where sanctification begins? Well, the answer to where it begins lies in Jesus himself, right? In John 17, 19. For them I sanctify myself. Or as Megan just read from her version of the Bible, for their sake... I sanctify myself so that they too may be sanctified. For us to be sanctified, Jesus had to take the action to sanctify himself first. So, how does sanctification begin? It begins with us. And how does it begin with us? Through a sense of awareness of two words. Imperfection, or synonyms of the word imperfection you can think of, right? Impurity, unholiness, and temple. Let's look at one of the greatest prophets, in my opinion, within the Bible, prophet Isaiah. In Isaiah chapter 6, we see in the year that King Isaiah died, he had a vision. That was the call and commission of Isaiah. And in that vision, he sees the Lord Almighty sitting on a throne, and then he sees cherubims and seraphims. And there, Isaiah says a statement. Woe to me, I cried, for I am ruined. I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. I am a man of unclean lips. I am imperfect. I am impure. Isaiah had a sense of awareness of who he actually was. And at that point, the seraphs and the cherubims, they took a live coal from the altar and touched his lips and purified him and set him apart. And then the Lord Almighty called him and said, Who is going to go for me? Whom shall I send? And he said, Here I am, and send me. Let me ask you something, my dear brothers and sisters. Right now, we are standing before the Lord Almighty. This is just a building, right? But every single artifact, every single substance within this building holds a symbolic representation. Have we ever in our lives, and this is a question to myself too, have we ever in our lives felt the way that Isaiah did and thought, I am imperfect, I'm impure. Every Sunday we say, even today we said, holy art thou, O God, holy art thou, mighty, holy art thou, immortal, crucified for us, have mercy on us. Every time we say that, do we ever in our hearts feel I'm so imperfect. I'm so unworthy to even say, oh God, you are a holy one. Let's think of this question from another perspective. The seraphs and cherubims, in order to purify Isaiah, they used live coal from the altar. What today is a symbol of that live coal, that symbol of purification within our altar? This is a question that I actually asked my Sunday school students very recently. And the first, first answer that they all said was incense, which is understandable, right? Because live coal, something burning, incense. But I told them, think out of the box. That coal was used to purify, to cleanse, to set him apart. What stands for that here? What, could, what should burn us here? The holy body and blood of Jesus Christ, right? Let me ask you, from another perspective, let me ask you, how many of us, when we take this holy body and blood, have felt burned? Has your heart faltered? Have you felt a little fear inside you because you stand before the son of the living God's body and blood? Personally speaking, for me, I can tell you very sadly that no, not all the time. I can come here, I can stand here very prayerfully, I can go towards communion very prayerfully, but I can still tell you, no, I haven't felt that I'm imperfect. 
no, I haven't felt that burn a lot of the times because I'm not completely focused and I'm not completely aware sometimes of who I actually am. My dear friends, we need to realize something. Isaiah, he only got his commission. He was only, be, he was only able to be set apart for the Lord when he himself realized just how imperfect and just how unworthy he was. Can we have that sense of awareness? As we enter into the second part of communion, can we start to think of ourselves as someone who's so imperfect? We can be anything in this world, right? Right now, some of us are students, some of us are workers, some of us are engineers, doctors, right? Pharmacists, teachers, actions, deacons, right? Everyone, you can be anything you want to be, but anything that you attain from those things, does that matter? Not at all, right? What truly matters? The first thing that matters is that sense of awareness that you are the imperfect, the unholy sons and daughters of the living God who, despite the way we are, loves us unconditionally. But the sense of awareness should not just be when we're in this earthly temple. It should also be when we realize that ourselves, the second sense of awareness that we should have is that we ourselves are the living temples of God, the living temples of the living God. And what's a temple, right? A temple is, or a church, is a place where we all come together, where we're praising, we're worshiping, we're adoring our God, we're loving him. But it's also a place that we believe God dwells in. And if we look at the temple like that, that means God must dwell in us and he must start doing works through us. How? There's a goal we have to achieve if God dwells in us. How? What do we look at to actually understand that? Well, let's turn to one of the wisest, yet at the end, very not so wise man to ever live on this earth, Solomon. In 1 Kings chapter 8, you see this beautiful prayer that Solomon says for the dedication of the temple that he built. And to put it into our thoughts, Let's, took, let's look at 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 60. 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 60. So that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is no other. So that all people of this earth, that all creation, that all nature will know that the Lord is God and that there is no other. Solomon prayed this for an earthly temple that he built. Okay, but this prayer shouldn't just be for a dedication of an earthly temple. It should be for us too. It's a dedication prayer for us. Can we, can we really, with our thought, with our word, with our deed, can proclaim that the Lord our God, that the Lord is one? Just like the Jews say every day in their prayer, Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Had. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Can we proclaim that with our lives? Can people around us, can the creation around us realize that from our lives? Let me tell you, my friends, if they can't, the after effects, it's not going to be good, right? Because if you look to the next chapter over, the Lord appears to Solomon and says to him, if you and my people do not follow my ways, do not walk in the way I tell you to walk in, I will destroy this temple. I will make it rubble, and those who walk by it is going to mock at it, will scoff at it. Let's look at our lives, my friends. If we ourselves can't proclaim with our lives that we're imperfect, holy temples of the Lord, if, despite our imperfection, that we're trying to live and strive to be that temple of the Lord, though, even though our life will look good, even though the decisions that we make will look good, even though the priorities that we make may work out correctly at that point in time, there's going to be a time when God will just capture a hold of you. You know, my Amichi always says, So, are we ready to face that after effect of when God actually captures a hold of us? because of the fact that we don't have a sense of awareness of who we are and who it is that we serve. As Christians, 
Sanctification, it's a never-ending process. Till our last breath, we are fighting to be set apart, people of God, just for his kingdom, for his glory. And in this run for sanctification, if we don't live with that sense of awareness that we're imperfect, and even with that imperfection, if we don't live to be the temple of God, proclaiming that the Lord our God, that the Lord is one, then let me tell you, what Jesus said in John 17, 19, why? Why did he say that? For our sake, he sanctified himself. Why? You know, there's an incident in my life which I believe I will carry with me till my last breath. And this is, if I can say some incidents that changed my life, this would rank in one of the top 10. It was when I was in college, most of you know, I took an advanced cadaver course, and one day I, had to, I walked in to review over something, and my friend's uh, group was doing a dis uh, dissection at that point. And they were like, oh, Gifty, we need help, so could you help with this? So I jumped in, and we're all talking, we're laughing, we're enjoying while studying. It's a fun time when all of a sudden, I just hear crying. And I thought I was imagining it first because we're all laughing. Where is this crying coming from? And then I look to the side and I see my friend. She just has tears pouring down her eyes. She's just crying her eyes out. And before any of us could ask, she goes, Oh, my poor, poor Jesus. Oh, my poor Jesus. Oh, my poor Jesus. And I looked at her. And then I looked at the dissection we're doing. It was a hand dissection. Then I looked back at her, and I realized what she was talking about. You see, we are one of God's most amazing creations. And this hand, it looks simple, right? Compared to most of the other parts of the body, it looks very simple. But there's a lot within it. Okay, There's muscles, there's tendons, there's, there's a lot within it. And through every single part within it, a nail was pierced through on an innocent man. Just, we've all seen, most of us have probably seen Passion of Jesus Christ, right? Or we've seen other shows that show the crucifixion. And now, if you think of it from this kind of perspective that I saw, you will wince eternally. It's not even wince. You'll just flinch from the pain that he might have felt. My God. For our sake, he sanctified himself. For us, he humbled himself. He brought himself down into this earth. He washed the feet of his disciples and in the end took pain so heartbreakingly so that we all can be sanctified too. Being Christians, my friends, it isn't just about going to church, right? It's not just about participating in service. It's not just about helping. It's not just about charity. It's not just about that. That's all important. But in order for it to be actually meaningful, you have to be who a Christian actually is, right? A Christian is a follower of Christ. It's something that I tell my kids all the time, my Sunday school kids all the time. Christian is a follower of Christ. And who is Christ? The lover of the unloved. If we're standing in a group and we're talking to people and there's one person in there who's left out, talking to that one person, loving that one person, that's who Christ was. If there is someone who is shunned by society, if there is someone who is being left out because of their social, so-called social class or because of something that they did before or anything, talking to that person, loving that person, that's who Christ was. Christ taught us, my friend, to see everything the way God taught us to see. Christ taught us to love the world that God loved, right? He loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son. And Christ tells us we need to be that kind of person. However, in order to do all of that, we have to have that awareness that we're imperfect, right? If we think of ourselves as something perfect, then there's no way we can love people like that. There's no way we can be people who has no division, who has no barrier, right? And we also have to remember one thing. Every time we bring up barriers, every time we bring up divisions, right? Regardless, whatever it might be, class, prestige, right? Denomination, religion, every time, every time that happens, 
There's no difference between us and the people who cried out, crucify him. Every decision that we make, it's a nail going through an innocent man's body. It's a whiplash to that body. It's a crown of thorns to his head. There's no difference between us and the people who called out, crucify him. God gave us immense power, my friends. Immense power to crucify his son over and over again with our actions. So, on this World Sunday School Day, let's take a vow. Let's take a vow to not leave the son of the living God alone in darkness to die again. Let's take a vow to be people who actually know how to love others, to actually have no walls, no barriers, no divisions. What's the need for that? We're all human in the end. We're all going back to the same place in the end. We're all dust. We're all imperfect creation of God. Let's make a vow to actually start from this point on to be aware of who it is and that we actually are the imperfect child of God who's trying with our every breath to be the living temple of that God despite any shortcomings that we might have. And I pray that the child in God will help us to be people that are truly aware of who it is that we are, that we are people who are going to be trying to do greater things for his glory and his glory only, that I pray that our lives will just cry out every moment, every second with our every breath. Adonai lohenu, Adonai kad. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for um, World Sunday School. And please bless us and be heal the sick and be with the homeless. And um, thank you for the wonderful message. And we we will um, praise you. We'll always um, be with us. Amen. May I stand and repeat the prayer of Sanskrit after. I confess that I have sinned against you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in thought word and deed. I am sorry with all my heart for these my sins. I believe in your promise that you will receive all those who truly repent. O Lord, who is merciful and full of grace, accept me even as you accepted the publican, the woman who was a sinner, and the thief on the cross. Comfort me with the consolation of your word. O oh Lord, grant that your holy body and holy blood, in which I now partake, may redeem me from judgment and condemnation, and bring me to life and wholeness. Amen. May God Almighty be compassionate to all of you who have truly confessed your sins. God has freely forgiven your sins to make you worthy to partake in this Holy Communion. Dearly beloved, pray with me 
that this service may be acceptable to the Lord. Lord, we humbly knock at your door. We come into your house and we pray for your blessing. Sanctify your servants by your truth. The Lord, hear and answer the prayers of your people. You have promised that we're two or three are gathered in your name. You will be in our midst. We pray that you send us the gift of your Holy Spirit to make this dwell in us, your people, as it dwells in the apostles. O oh God and Lord of all, make us worthy to greet one another with the kiss of peace, freed from all insensitivity and united in love. To you, O oh Father, to your only Son and your Holy Spirit, we give you praise and glory, now and forever. Sisters, have you seen this holy and divine peace? Let us bow our heads before the merciful Lord. Gracious Lord, we bow before you, merciful Father. You dwell on high, and condescend to look upon things that are lowly. Bless now those who have bowed their heads in your presence with the grace of your Holy Son with whom and with the Holy Spirit you accept all praise and glory now and forever. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, let us participate in the Holy Kurbana, which is now offered to us with a commitment, a reverence, humility, purity of heart, love, true faith, and devotion to God the Father, to whom all things belong, is offered the sacrifice of grace, peace, and praise in the spirit of unity and concord. The love of God the Father, the grace of Holy Begotten Son, and the communion and abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all, dearly beloved, forever. And also with you. May our hearts be with Christ on high. To sing praise and worship the Creator of all things. Who is adored by the heavenly host, sun and moon, and all the stars, the earth and seas, and all that dwell there, angels and archangels, thrones and powers. Shadowim and Seraphim ever proclaiming. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Heaven and earth are full of His glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is He who has come. And is it come in the name of the Lord? Hosanna in the highest. When the sinless one of His own will chose to suffer death for us in His. He took bread in his holy hand. Bless the Lord. He gave thanks. Blessed, sanctified, and broke it, and gave it to his apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. In the same manner, he took the cup. Bless the Lord. He gave thanks. Blessed, sanctified, and gave to his apostles, saying, Bring this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. A 
bless you. The softness you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. O Lord, we remember your death, we celebrate your resurrection, and we await your second coming. May your blessing rest upon us all. O Lord, as we remember your death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and look forward to your second coming, to judge the world in righteousness and truth, we offer this service and sacrifice, entreating you not to deal with us according to our sins, but according to your own abundant mercy and saying. Have mercy upon us, O Lord our God. We give thanks to you, we glorify you, and we worship you. O source of all goodness, have mercy on us and bless us. And surrender us, O Lord. And surrender us, O Lord. And surrender us, O Lord. By your grace, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Holy Spirit sanctify this bread that it may be the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Holy Spirit sanctify the wine that it may be the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. O Lord, sanctify the bodies and souls of those who receive these gifts, that they may bear fruit for the stability of your holy church. Establish our family, your holy church, founded on the rock of faith, against which the gates of hell shall not prevail, and preserve her to the end from strife and error. To you with the Son and the Holy Spirit, we offer praise and thanksgiving, both now and forever. Amen. Look with mercy, O Lord, on your holy church throughout the world, and all the bishops who bear the burden of leading and guiding her, especially our Father and God, Philippos, Marcus, Osom, Ville Metropolitan, and Dirigis, Mar Theodosius, Suffragan Metropolitan, the moderators of CSI and CNI, Archbishop of the Anglican Church, and our fathers, Yerke Makoilos, Joseph Mar Barnabas, Thomas Mar Timotheos, Isaac Mar Philoxenos, Abraham Mar Paulos, Matthias Mar Macarios, Gregorius Mar Stephanos, Thomas Mar Titos, priests, deacons, evangelists, faithful members of our church, and seekers of the faith. Lord, we remember all who exercise authority in various countries, especially in this country, Give to each one your Holy Spirit, that they may diligently work in your vineyard. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we remember the Mother of our Lord, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Holy Apostles, the Prophets, the Preachers, the Evangelists, the Martyrs, the Confessors, and all the Saints. Lord, we remember the three councils of Nicaea, Constantinople, and Ephesus, and all Holy Fathers who have participated in them. Make us worthy to follow in their footsteps. Lord, we also remember all the faithful who are departed and fallen asleep in the true faith. Grant that we also may with them be counted worthy of the remission of our sins and be gathered into your heavenly kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful universe you created and the life and the possibilities of it. Forgive us, O Lord, for you have distorted the universe for our greed and selfishness. Help us, O Lord, to be good and faithful stewards for the fulfillment of your will. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The blessing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with you all, dearly beloved, forever. And also with you. Let us spend a few moments in the intercessory prayer. Let us thank God for this wonderful day. Let us thank 
for all the blessings and his guidance we experience and helping us to observe today as the World Sunday School Day. Let us pray for all the Sunday School leaders, the Sunday School Samajam Prasun Tirmeni, and the staff, and the very leaders in the diocesan and center region and parish level. Let us submit our Sunday School, our parish Sunday School into God's mighty hand. And let us thank the dedicated services of our teachers, office bearers, and superintendents. Let us pray for all the Sunday school children of our church. And let us ask God to help them to learn your word and to live accordingly. <coughs> At this time, let us pray for our church as the church is mourning on the demise of our metropolitan. Let us thank God for his wonderful and blessed life. And let us also ask God to give his strength and knowledge to the suffering metropolitan and other bishops to lead the church for the glorification of God's name. Let us also pray for the world peace as the world, the entire world is going through the tough and difficult times after the COVID-19. A lot of people have lost their dear ones. Hundreds and thousands of people are experiencing pain and a lot of issues after the disease. Now let us pray for all the health workers and the people who work in front line. Let us also remember and pray for the people who are bereaved after lo losing their dear ones. Let us pray for Mabin and family. Let us submit each and every family of our church into God's mighty hand. As many of our members are going through tough situations after sickness, many of our parents are under treatment, some are, are in the hospital, some are taking medications from home. Let us ask God to have mercy on them and to heal them. This time, let us pray for our, all our children, especially children with uh, physical and uh, other issues. Let us pray for Ashby. Let us remember Vicky. Let us also pray for Prince and Sneha. Let us summit each and every one of us into God's mighty hand. Let us ask God's guidance and protection in our daily lives. O oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, make perfect the offering and oblations presented before you. Sanctify our bodies, souls, and spirits, so that with pure and confident hearts, we may address you as God and Father and pray. Grace, mercy. 
mercy and blessings of the holy and glorious Trinity, uncreated, self-existent, eternal, adorable, and one in essence, be with you all, dearly beloved, forever. And also with you, a holy and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. Holy things for holy people. Who is one Father, who is one Son, who is one Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And from the beginning, forever and ever. Amen. The one Holy Father, who created the world in his mercy, is with us. Amen. The one Holy Son, who saved it by his precious passion, is with us. Amen. The one living Holy Spirit, who makes perfect and fulfills all that is and that has been is with us. May the name of the Lord be blessed as in the beginning, both now and forever. Amen. Now as we come to your table, we recall those come before us. Let their lives be an example. May we use them teaching us our God. Lord, you prepare this communion. You are our hope and salvation. We bow our heads in your presence as we share in your body and blood. And if we find renewal of life in you, Lord of mercy, 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 Lord of Lord of Lord of mercy. Dearly beloved, pray for me. As for us, our days are like grass. We bloom like the flowers of the field. Bless us, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was the beginning, as now and ever shall be. Amen. O Lord, at your command, death out its way. You abolished death through your resurrection from the dead. Therefore, we praise and exalt you. O Lord, every mouth to sing your praise. O Lord, who gathers up the children of Adam from everywhere, bless us and help us. O Son of God, your death has changed our death into life. Raise us from the dust and we ever praise you. God the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit is worthy of glory and worship forever. From the beginning, from generation to generation, may he be praised. Hallelujah. O Son of God, who came for our salvation and will come again for our resurrection and for the renewal of our race, grant, we pray, forgiveness of sins to your servants through your own atoning sacrifice. Amen. O Lord God, graciously bless these your children who partake of your most precious body and blood which was given on Calvary for the forgiveness of sins that 
they may abide in your presence forever. Amen. The blessings of Jesus Christ, our great God and Savior, be on those who bear these sacred mysteries, on those who dispense them, on those who receive them, and on all who have participated and shall participate in them. The grace of God be on us all, both now and forever. Lord, have mercy and bless us. Glory and praise be to you, O Lord, our last and refuge. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was broken and shed on the cross of Calvary, are given to you for the health of your body and soul. <laughs>
Praise be to you, o Lord, our God forever. Praise be to you, o Lord Jesus Christ. May the holy body and blood which we have partaken be not for our condemnation, but for life and salvation to us all. O God, grant us your blessing. Only I shall bow down before you, and every tongue shall praise your holy name. For you give life to the dead, and you are the hope of life in the grave. We may praise you, O Lord, and give you thanks for your mercy towards us. We praise you, O Lord, because in your, in your abundant mercy you have fed and strengthened us with the precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have thereby made us one with him and with all the members of his mystical body, we pray you to give us grace to continue in that holy fellowship and ever to offer glory and praise to you and to your only begotten Son and to your Holy Spirit. Accept the present petition of your people and pardon our offenses. Enable us to receive your gifts and blessings and send us a true peace. My beloved brothers and sisters, I commend you to the grace and blessings of the holy and glorious Trinity. Go now in peace and serve the Lord with the gifts and blessings that you have received from the turning sacrifice of the Lord. Amen. You both near and far who are saved with the victorious cross of the Lord, 
and sealed with the seal of holy baptism. This holy trinity will forgive you your sins and comfort your souls. Pray for me, my brothers and sisters, weak and sinful as I am, that I may obtain mercy and help. Go in peace and serve the Lord with gladness and rejoicing. May the Lord accept your ministration and answer your prayers. Uh, uh, we would like to thank all our members and our dear friends, those who are attended this Holy Communion in person and those who joined online. And I would like to thank all the people who have joined online. And here we uh, come to the end of this Holy Communion service. Thank you for joining this Sunday. And today is uh, we know that today we celebrate as the Sunday School, uh, World Sunday School Day, and uh, I'm happy and glad to see the Sunday School uh, children. Many of the Sunday School children are here, and also the teachers, and we want to thank the Sunday School office bearers, uh, Sheba, Matthew, uh, Subi, and uh, Sonia for arranging uh, the Sunday School a celebration, Sunday School Day celebration in a better way. Thank you, and let us give them an applause. And the kids who have uh, uh, attended and uh, participated at the, uh, and lead, led the service. So it was glad to see uh, Samuel and Joanna, uh, no, Abigail reading the lessons. Thank you, Sami yeah, and Abigail. Yeah. And also, <coughs> Prayer by Lemuel, and uh, thank you, Lemuel. Yes. Uh, also, the Sunday school uh, teachers were uh, they helped us in uh, ushering Sandosh and uh, uh, Sean. Thank you, Sandosh and Sean. Uh, and also the very blessed message uh, from Joanna Sakreya and uh, Gifty. Uh, both of them did a good job, and the message was uh, super and good, and it was touching to the heart. And uh, Joanna, congratulations uh, for coming with uh, that message in a very professional way. And she by hearted the whole entire message. And it was a blessed message. Uh, and uh, Gifty, too. Gifty, always uh, doing a great job in uh, doing the sermon. Thank you, Gifty. And uh, let us give them an applause for that. Yes, thank you. And everyone, you know, Troy and Ian helped us in the altar. 
and uh, uh, Shona and the team, Shana and Megan, they helped us in the you know, choir. And so let us thank everyone. And I don't think I miss anyone. Yeah. And as usual, Rechan is here for the sanitation. And AV team, thank you AV team. Uh, again, uh, Edwin, Joshua, and uh, uh, the team, uh, everyone, those who are you know, helping in the uh, AV team. And uh, so we are very grateful to them also <coughs> for their uh, support. So thank you everyone, and uh, may God bless us all. Anything else? You want to share anything? So, Kanyai Samakunum, Karanda Ilano, Ella Vidulum, Palavidulum, Prayasatuka Pui, and Alla Parasperum, Kairan, or Rausarum, helping each other and caring each other. So, Nana, uh, I was attending the funeral service uh, in New York. I attended the service with the, the, the family members who also you know, flew from here. Um, uh, so, it was a very blessed uh, service. Uh, may, uh, let us remember Mebin, uh, Sheba, and family, the entire family, in our prayers. Mm. Uh, it was after many years I heard. I heard that they were in the middle of took care of them also, so I want to thank you also. So thank you everyone, and uh, may God bless us all. Again, thank you the AV team. Uh, Stanley is leading the you know AV stuff, so thank you Stanley. I see I see him you also, here also. Thank you and may God bless us all. And now uh, let me ask the ushers, and you know the COVID is still here, <laughs> and we are also here by the grace of God. So. Uh, but we need to take care of the, you know, the directions by the uh, CDC and all. So may I ask the ashes to lead the families to the out. You know, you have a good, very pleasant weather outside, so you can spend some time there.